So disgraced film producer Harvey Weinstein ousted from the Motion Picture Academy after over 30 women accused him of sexual harassment. But late night host John Oliver is calling out the Academy for hypocrisy. Take a listen. And just yesterday, the Motion Picture Academy made a big announcement. The group that counts among its current members, Roman Polanski, Bill Cosby, and Mel Gibson, has found the one guy who treated women badly and kicked him out. So, congratulations, Hollywood. See you on the next Oscars, where, and this is true, Casey Affleck will be presenting Best Actress. <laughs> Pretty good. There are also reports we should say that the Weinstein Company is in talks for a sale of assets with Colony North Star's private equity arm. The Colony North Star closed up for the day. There is the stock again there. Let's take this whole story to our political power panel. Conservative commentator Ashley Pratt is with me and liberal commentator Wendy Acefo. It's great to have you both here. Thank, Thank you for you. having me. I mean, Wendy, do you think it's odd that Weinstein's been singled out since others have been accused? Hello, Woody Allen. Roman Polanski, especially the both accused of assaulting minors, are still members. Does, doesn't that seem a little strange to you? It does seem strange, and quite frankly, you know, I think what's happening here is the court of public opinion and also the advent of social media. We had this big, like, windstorm after the news broke of, of this indiscretion, and then everyone is just calling. There's even a change.org petition for him to leave the academy. So, you know, I think just moving forth, we have to set a clear demarcation here to say anyone who violates any of the principles needs to leave the academy. And, you know, Harvey Weinstein is definitely one of those people who should not be there. Well, and I think many agree that Woody Allen and Roman Polanski shouldn't be around either. And Absolutely. you know, it is funny, Woody Allen, Ashley, yesterday, he warned of a witch hunt atmosphere over Harvey Weinstein. It seemed like he was, you know, defending him basically. And then he received a lot of backlash on social media. Then he clarified, he says, well, Mr. Weinstein's a, a sad, sick man. Mm -hmm. He's been accused, just to be clear, everybody, of sexually assaulting his own daughter. Don't you think he should be a little careful here, Ashley? I think at this point, I, I really don't know how Harvey Weinstein is the straw that broke the camel's back in Hollywood, but I'm glad that there is a discussion around it. Now, with that being said, I think there needs to be a deep look in our society and not just in Hollywood at what we find acceptable. And I think overnight when we saw the Me Too hashtag campaign going on about sexual assault and harassment, it really spoke to the effects of this that it has in our society and worldwide. And I really think Hollywood should take a deep look because, you know, people are buying into their movies, it's the entertainment culture, and at the same time, if this is what behavior they find acceptable, they should really, again, take, take a deep look at that. And getting Harvey Weinstein out of the Motion Picture Association, like, great, but I mean, really, look at some of the other members and wonder, can we do better? Because mm -hmm. I think we can. Well, I think, uh, you know, basically, fans should vote with their wallets. I haven't watched a Woody mm -hmm. Allen movie, ladies, in years. Seriously. Absolutely. All right, let's switch gears to the Clinton Foundation. They're saying now, this is Hillary, saying that they're not going to return that $250,000 that they received in donations from Weinstein following the accusations of sexual harassment and even of rape. They say the money's already been spent. I want you to listen to Hillary Clinton's most recent comments on Weinstein. I was just sick. I was shocked. I was appalled. Would you have called him a friend? I, yes, I probably would have. He donated money to you d directly and indirectly. Mm -hmm. uh, would, would you give the money back? Well, there's no one to give it back to. What other people are saying, what my former colleagues are saying is they're going to donate it to charity. And of course I will do that. I give 10% of my income to charity every year. This will be part of that. Uh, there's, no, uh, there's no doubt about it. Wendy, she's kind of backtracking a little bit. Remember, we didn't hear for a long time from Hillary Clinton over her friend Harvey Weinstein in those first few days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, and I think what's interesting here is that they're saying, the foundation is saying that, you know, between 100000 to $250,000 has already been spent. But, you know, I, I think we should broaden the scope here and look beyond Hillary Clinton. There's members, 10 members in the Democratic Party who have said they're going to donate their money to charity. And sometimes just donating money besides speaking out about the transgression is not enough. Uh, this sort of reminds me of when we had the Las Vegas shooting. We had a lot of people in the GOP saying, you know, we feel sorry for the victims, but then they took over $5 million from the NRA, you know, so Tom Tillis being one of them, Roy mm. Blunt, uh, Richard Burr. So again, we have to look at our politicians to talk about what are we going to do when we get money from individuals or from entities which perform mm. nefarious behaviors. And right now, I don't think that Clinton is stepping up to the plate and she needs to do more, but I do okay. commend 
those 10 Democrats who have said they're going to donate to charity. That's interesting. That's interesting you say that uh, as a Democrat yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's interesting, uh, actually, since the 2000 election cycle, you know, Weinstein, and she was just bringing this up, uh, Wendy was, he's donated to the party about a yes. million dollars yes. in his own name, in addition to collecting and providing one and a half million as part of a bundle, those bundled donations. Um, you know, what about that side of this, the political money, the campaign contributions, right. Ashley? What and do you do with that? And she has not responded really, as many people say, and they don't think that President Obama has really responded correctly to this. Correct. And while the spotlight right now is on Hillary Clinton when it comes to the donations and the Clinton Foundation, which is a whole nother thing that I'll talk about in a few seconds, I think the political implications here, anyone in this situation who has accepted or received money for any political candidate on either side of the aisle in a situation like this, give the money back and make a stand. Be bold and be strong. Do not wait five days to make a statement that says that you, yeah. you know, you feel sorry and you're appalled because, yes, it is appalling, but she was the candidate who said she was the voice and advocate for women. How can she sit there and say that? and say that this is appalling and yet keep this money. So yeah. the Clinton Foundation, I mean, we have seen widespread, you know, hypocrisy there when it comes to the, you know, they support women and causes of women all right. around the world. However, they support and take money from governments that practice human rights abuses against women. They, so mm -hmm. this really is not shocking behavior to me from the Clinton Foundation. Yeah, the Foundation. Foundation's had a lot of issues, but, guys. Thank yes. you. You're going to be back in just a few minutes. I'm not done with you, so stand by. We've got more to talk about with you ladies. Thank you. And Thank we you. also want to bring our viewers up to speed on some... To any fans of this show who are also big fans of Donald Trump, it's time to make a decision, guys. Do you support him? Or do you support this show that constantly mocks and denigrates everything about it? If you like Trump, then go away. Yeah, so that was NBC late night talk show host Seth Meyers. He was taking aim at supporters of President Trump saying uh, that, well, he just doesn't need them. Now, ABC late night host Jimmy Kimmel following suit and saying this about losing viewers over his anti-Trump rhetoric. Listen to this. It's a bit of a risk that you're taking talking about that stuff. You might lose the audience. Three years ago, I was equally liked by Republicans and Democrats, and then <laughs> Republican numbers went way down, like 30 percent or whatever. And, you know, as a talk show host, that's not ideal, but I did, I would do it again in a heartbeat. So you don't mind if Republicans turn off your show? I wouldn't say I don't mind. I mean, I love for everyone. I want everyone with a television to watch the show. But if they're so turned off by my opinion on uh, health care and gun violence, then I don't know. I probably won't want to have a conversation with them anyway. Good riddance? Well, not good riddance, but riddance. <laughs> All right, let's do a stock check of NBC's parent company, First Comcast. That stock ended the day in the green. ABC's parent company, that's where the Kimmel Show is broadcast, Walt Disney ending the day up as well. My political panel is back with me, Ashley Pratt and Wendy Osefa. Ladies, it's great to have you, of course, back again. And it's interesting, Wendy, because ratings for Late Night with Seth Meyers have dropped year over year. I mean, what does that say to you that people are tuning off that show? Well, maybe for that particular show, but we will say that Jimmy Kimmel from October 2nd to October 6th, he has had the highest rated show on his network at that period of time. And quite frankly, to be honest with you, if anyone decides not to watch a show because they do not agree with the political views of the host, it's not only childish, it's borderline egotistical. Amen. I mean, come, I mean seriously, come on, I am the liberal on Fox News. I am here. So I completely <laughs> understand. It. Exactly. And so, you know, what makes our country and our beautiful country so amazing is that we are not monolithic. We have different opinions. We have different views. Mm -hmm. And it's okay if someone doesn't agree with you. So, you yeah. know what? Yeah. It's, it's tough, <laughs> though, guys. You have to admit, I mean, this is, I mean, the election really has polarized so many people. I mean, I, like I said, I've had these crazy conversations at dinner with friends that are on the other side of what I believe. And then you've got, and Ashley, you've got late night host Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Fallon. He's done something different, which I think is interesting. He hasn't been participating in these jokes. He says, quote, it's just not what I do. I don't really even care that much about politics. I love pop culture more than I love politics. So Ashley, do you think that he's making the smarter move just kind of staying out of it? 
I, I do, but I want to speak to Wendy's point here. There, there was a Pew Research poll that came out last week that showed over 60 percent of Dem Democrats and over 50 percent of Republicans admit that they do not have friends on the opposite side of their political spectrum, which is just a sad reality of how polarizing mm -hmm. politics has become. So I think these late night sh show hosts, like if politics does matter to them, as it does for the two that we had mentioned, Seth Meyers and you know Jimmy Kimmel, then go ahead. But you do risk losing viewers. Mm -hmm. Now, at the same time, if you're going to take the route of Jimmy Fallon and say that entertainment should be without politics, like sports, for example, we've just yeah. seen a rift with the NFL, yeah. then so be it. I mean, there used to be a respite out there for people who wanted to just be entertained and not swallow politics 24-7. And that has gone away because I think of the complete polarization of this election, which I think is sad. But it's also sad yeah. that we can't come together and really just enjoy each other's company anymore. <laughs> and disagree with each other and have that be okay without it getting nasty. I've said this on my Absolutely. show at 5 a.m., ladies, that I just want to watch football and I just want to watch the Emmys and look at the dresses. And I don't mm -hmm. want to be preached at. Two times I'll say yeah. amen. Absolutely. There we go. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Ashley, Wendy, thank you. It was great to have you both here. Thank you. Right. Thank you.